Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I meet with the successful student, Joel Bolter, to discuss how you can find university success after having, in your own opinion, underperformed in your A-levels or pre-university study. Both Joel and I felt that we did not get the grades that we wanted, and both of us came out with a first class degree. And in this podcast, we will discuss how we turned it around, and how if you're in a similar situation to what we were, how you can do it too. So hello, Joel, and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast, and thank you very much for giving your time. Before we begin, we'd just like to overview your story uh, as a student from when you first started, or even just before you started, when you were A-levels, to where you are now, and then we'll go and add some further depth to that throughout the episode. Yeah, sure. So when I uh, took my A-levels, I basically, AS, so end of year 12, I failed in both chemistry and biology, and that leaving me just with business and economics to go for real hall. Um, so p- picked up basically the extended project qualification, and then when the actual A level exams again underperformed in business, where I was expected like a B slash an A, I ended up getting a D in that um, in the C in economics. So actually like really low sort of grades for what you'd expect for university entry. Um, luckily, like St- Derby still accepted me in. Um, but it's come from there that. Each of my years um, at uni, sort of, I finished on a first at the end of each of those years, and a first overall now um, after four years at university, having also done a placement and now on to doing a graduate job. So, yeah, a big change from the time of ALs. And you're also the president of an award winning society as well, don't forget that one. Oh, yeah, got to include that one. In. <laughs> <laughs> got to include that one. But I think the key for this podcast is to talk about A-levels and how A-level results don't actually determine your future. And just to echo you, you got a D in your business and you came out or you're coming out at the moment with a first class degree. I got a C in law and I came out with a first class degree in law and I got, what was it, B, C, D at my A-levels. And I didn't do very well. I got a first class degree and you did the same. You got a first class degree as well. So the first thing to say is, well, A-level results clearly don't correlate to university and they shouldn't necessarily be a barrier to you doing well and that's one of the amazing things that I think about the University of Derby but just going into A-level results and just thinking about when you first started university how did you feel having got those A-level results and just being allowed into university how did you feel you were going to do at university did you think you could do well I think I had that feeling in me that I hadn't reached my potential with my A-levels or my GCSEs actually so it was more for me, it's like how to bring out that potential. But actually, I think when I got the A-level results and had sort of the several hours of panic whilst the university decided whether to give me a place or not, um, it was it kind of like flipped a switch for me that that focus, that hard work sort of almost began really and just put that into my uni uh, work throughout my time Um in my four-year degree, actually, that hard work. Um, I've always been someone who's probably like quite sort of goal orientated, so that's where I sort of leave my focus. And with A levels getting into university was sort of like the last goal. So kind of like that summer before university was like, well, what do I want to do next? And it was kind of like I want a first class degree, which you know, having just got those A level results was pretty kind of probably some other people would have looked optimistic, but um, <laughs> I think. It was that and get a placement and a graduate job. And I, I've managed to achieve all of those. But I think it was that, that once you switch the goals to it and I think you get the environment and the support at the university to get where you want to go. I think that's what helped me massively, really. Definitely. I think something that was recommended when I was talking about failure in another episode of the podcast with a staff member called David Robertshaw, he said about shooting to the stars and aiming high because if you don't aim for that first you're never going to get it and so you're almost removing a barrier yourself so you know it's i don't think it's optimistic i think it's actually 
the right thing to do is setting that that positive goal and having that belief is really important. But the second thing I want to touch upon from what you've said is about how that failure you use as a motivation, you use to make you realize that this actually is a time that you need to work hard. And I actually think the exact same thing happened with me uh, when I didn't do as well as I'd hoped. It made me realize that actually you need to work hard. I just couldn't scrape by by doing what I was doing to get where I wanted to. And so, yeah, failure can be a massive motivator. I don't know if you agree with that. I, I do massively. I think I also saw the university's opportunity because also the course, business management course that I've done at Derby um, is much more focused on what you do in the workplace. So it's applied things, so doing management reports, whereas A-levels, just memory. I've never had the best of sort of <laughs> memories on that sort of thing. So I think I saw it as an opportunity to actually show more of what I can do that way rather than actually just you know, folk have worked for two years and try and remember it all at the end. You just touched upon something quite important there, which is about the difference between A-levels and university, and particularly about memory. Um, at university, generally speaking, with assignments and things like that, you're not tested on the same things as A-levels. But was there anything else different between A-levels and university that helped you to succeed? Um, I think actually having that extra support, so a personal academic tutor for me was, you know, like, when my first meeting with him, it was, okay, this is what I've done at A-level, but this is where I want to get to with uni. And I think that and then the support from the lecturers and I just, for me, I think it's more the environment and how it's taught almost at Derby that helped me as well like quite a bit. That it's, it's a difficult one really to pin down on exactly what it was, but I feel like the learning environment, the way it's taught, and then the support from a personal academic tutor, okay, of how to get there um, was massive for me um, to really try and unlock that um, sort of potential for me. Um, I, I still don't know how best I learn. Um, I never did at A-levels. And maybe if I'd have worked out how I learned whilst I was doing A-levels, I might have done better in the exams. But I, it just seems that at Derby, it's just suited me perfectly. I think something you touched upon then was about the practicalities of what you do. I found that the, my course was very practical. I don't know if that's the case for every course, but the university just tried its best to be as practical as possible. And I felt that that helped because it was like setting what you're doing in real life rather than just from a textbook. Um, or, or actually some of the lecturers were practitioners who've gone there and worked in the real world, which I think that was really useful. You also touched upon your relationship with your lecturer and... I think, again, that is really important because the lecturers are the people who mark your work. And something that I found at university, I don't know if you'd agree with this, is that you could understand what you were aiming to do and what outcomes they were testing. And if you didn't understand something, you could ask them. So you weren't aiming like you were A-levels, almost towards the unknown, hoping that you were doing the right things. At university, it was a lot more clear what you needed to do. And if you had questions, you could directly ask the person, well, how can I do that? What do you recommend? Is there any advice for that and so on? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think that clarity is like massively important. Uh, there's, there's plenty of times through my four years at Derby where I've gone to a lecture and sort of said, well, this is where I'm going with the assignment, but I can't, you know, find journals that sort of discuss this or um, it's sort of in the way that I'm thinking of taking it, like what would you suggest? And sometimes it's like it's sometimes it's just the tiniest of switch on like your search term or something like that on an online journal library, and you, you're you're on your way. Whereas again, like you say with A levels, it feels a lot more. It's left to you to try and work out. Okay, am I am I on the right track with it? Um, as well, I think you know the coursework element of that at university helps that massively that you do get that chance to. Like ask questions as you are going along with an assignment and sort of try and seek that guidance but they seem to be a lot more sort of forthcoming with that support and guidance at university yeah definitely especially with coursework particularly because you know what you're getting assessed on whereas with exams uh, a levels you didn't know what was going to get assessed on with you on the day you didn't have the opportunity to get as much feedback i know you, exams are still a method used at university we've run lots of exam workshops and we have lots of content about that if you are studying exams but at university, you also have assignments and practical things that are really different and test different skills. So, yeah, I think those are both really important factors that hopefully helped. Well, I know they helped me succeed, but I think they also helped you to succeed as well. 
yeah and i think i found that particularly important that actually when i was looking for a university course that obviously the ultimate aim is at the end of that you get a, grad, a job at the end of it and i saw this one with diary where it has the real life experience it has the practitioners as you've touched on already who have been there and done it in the real world and then have come into um, academia and you know picking up on that experience and having been able to like to do a management report on a real business on a pro- real business's problem uh, is a lot more almost like relatable and you can sort of get more invested in that rather than looking at like stuff at a levels trying to understand some theories and then hope that the question that comes up on the day is uh for <laughs> what you've revised yeah definitely uh, that's a big factor for me is the fact that you know that you've got that motivation that the extra research you're doing and the extra work you're putting in is relevant and useful especially for assignments uh, if you do further reading you're like yeah this is going to help me whereas for a levels you're like oh it will help me if it comes up in the exam at the end of the year that's testing me in one day rather than in multiple sittings and so on so yeah definitely so we've talked about how you've been motivated to get a first and how the failure beforehand helped to motivate you uh, we've talked about how your links with lecturers helped um, helped you to develop and also helped you to understand what was expected of you and also to ask questions and also help for motivation. Uh, we've talked about some of the differences between university and A-level, but um, I have one last uh, question for you about A-levels. Earlier in the series, I interviewed a successful student called Sam Chikawori, and what we discussed is how university is an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself. I don't know if you would agree with that or not. I think it is that my lecturers would say the same and have done in recent weeks as I finished university that the Joel that turned up on the first day in September 2017 is a completely different person to who's now leaving the university um, this year. I think a lot of that is around confidence that I've come to university and then you sort of do well in that first term with your assignments and then you sort of like oh okay um, I'm sort of going on the right track to where I want to get to but then I think also almost like the social side of it is I've, I was always a quiet person I probably still am in comparison to some people but I'm a lot loads better than I am now and um, I think for me as well like on my first year uh, I was in the rugby team um, up until uh, any injury ruined that one but it was you know, that confidence of being within a group of people as soon as you come to university. I was the only one from my sixth form to come to Derby. Mm. So it's a great way, like the sports club or the society is a great way to get involved and come in and instantly got like friends to sort of be around. It really helps sort of create that almost like, so, like a softer landing at university. But I think it gave me that platform really to build upon with that confidence and, you know, just a completely different person now. And those friends who you met through your going and getting involved in the sports and also the society that you later got involved in, those friends won't have known the past of you. They yeah. won't have known who you were. And that's a really good opportunity because you can be the person you want to be rather than the person you were. And I, I made lots of changes between who I was because no one knew me. And that was an amazing chance. People didn't know who, who I was. They hadn't got the prejudices about, oh, this is who you used to be. You could start to develop and become your new self and i thought that was an amazing opportunity and i felt like i developed lots because of that it, it is a great opportunity and i think it's one that a lot of students take actually just just thinking about some people i've known throughout university it's, i think a lot of you do change but i think i don't know necessarily whether it's change or it's just actually finding actually the real you coming out wherever at school i think there's that pressure to almost like almost like conform with everyone else isn't that and i think it's you see you know probably what you'd refer to as probably the popular kid who is actually being themselves but then everyone else is just trying to sort of fit in around that aren't they whereas i think university like you say it's that blank slate and you can you just there you start off sort of as yourself or like growing towards that I guess there's definitely no pressure on you to conform at university. You're a lot more independent. No one's forcing you to go to classes. No one is watching you. You've got to be a lot more independent, but you can also stand out a lot more and be you. And it's a very different time to A-levels, where everything was on a timetable that you had to attend. You had to be there all day. You couldn't leave the premises often and so on. It's very different. Um, You've just touched a little bit on how you started to get involved in your first year in terms of rugby. 
Would you like to talk to more about how you got involved throughout your first year and then also your second and third years? So my first year, I think almost because of the poor A levels, I focused a lot on the academic side. So it was that and rugby. Um, then sort of towards the end of that first year, uh, injured my in a rugby training session, and that was the end of playing contact sport um, for me. So at that point, again, it was sort of that mental switch over that summer break. Before the second year, it was like, okay, now it's time to sort of work on the other goals, which was ultimately getting a placement, which I had a year to find a placement. Um, so starting to sort of get involved in other aspects. So uh, became a program rep at the start of, uh, my second year and then by the January of that year we came part time officer for the business school uh, a couple of months later got a placement and then became a student trustee of the union of students on their board so sort of almost from the bottom to the top of the union in one academic year um, but that growth that year was huge really and it's one that I look back on is like where I say that I'm sort of goal orientated that eventually like that year I you know, got everything I wanted and probably a bit more. Um, and, you know, it's a really good year for me. But that was the one where it's like shows you start getting involved in things and those opportunities do open up for you if you take them. Um, and then that's in as I came back from placement into my final year. Um, again, as a part-time officer for the business school, uh, president of the business society, which I also started up in my second year, I completely forgot. Um and uh, yes, yeah, still on the board of the Union of Students, and you know it's been a whilst it's been a busy year, um, you know it's been one that's been sort of really rewarding. And I'm the type I'm not the type of person to just sit around and chill. You know I, I'd rather like constantly be kept busy doing something. So it's it suited me perfectly, really. Definitely, I I'm, I feel exactly the same, uh, and I can see that we mirror each other a lot. So I I was very same the same as you in terms of the first year. I just focused on my academia, especially because of the fact that I'd not done very well at a levels my goal was i want to get a f i want to do as well as possible mine was a two one i didn't want to get a first at that point and then i got to my second year and was like oh i should get involved more i should try to look for a career you went you said placement i said career very similar and yeah it was all like getting involved more and more and then you got you i took on program rap with the first thing i did and then that led to further and further things and it sounds like we're on a very similar path and a very similar story so it's not unique if you do start saying yes to opportunities, more things will come up um, for sure. So the first, the first question in relation to that is, you got involved in a lot of extracurricular activities whilst doing your degree. How did that help you? I think a lot of it was confidence, um, but it's also dealing with those almost like softer skills that like, on a business degree is obviously really useful to have, um, especially, I also think it comes around with that point where we touched earlier about knowing the lecturers and having that conversation with them, particularly as a program rep where you're giving the, <laughs> your, your classmates feedback and trying to work towards like a, a constructive a solution with those lecturers. That, that relationship really grows with those staff members. And I think that that, you know, it's almost like one of the advantages of Derby is that when the, when the lecturers start to know you, you'll you'll stand in blends or the atrium and you walk past the lecturer and they'll say hello to you and just have a chat. Uh, yeah. Which again is something that you never had at school. Which you let teachers walk past you and you ignored you like you weren't there. <laughs> but um, I think it's that, that the confidence massively helped. Um, it really did. It makes me smile because I've never really thought about it like that. But yeah, definitely uh, getting involved with opportunities and you start to develop a a more a different relationship with your lecturers, more professional relationship than with your teachers who were just there to teach. You often started developing a um, like I said, a professional relationship where you can talk to them, you could share your ambitions and so on, and that can they can help then mentor you and so on. Being a program app, I do agree, definitely helps with that. But you don't just have to be a program app to do that. If you just get involved with things, help the lecturers out with things that they're doing, or just talk to them they will help to build that relationship with you in other ways. But yeah, I definitely found that being a program helped me a lot with uh, that, which then helps with opportunities, confidence, and also the confidence to ask them questions, which is stupid almost. So I, I was not afraid of asking them. I have things like, I really don't understand what I'm doing here. Like this, this may seem basic, but how, how, how do I do this? And they're like, oh, here's how, and so on. And I felt knowing them is a lot easier because to do that, whereas teachers, I found it harder to ask that question. Because it almost felt like they were going to tell you off, whereas lecturers are like, oh, here's here's how we can empower you and so on. 
yeah, I think it is a lot more of that at university, that thing about facilitating you to be successful and to uh, do well on your course rather than trying to teach you content. I think that it's a lot more of that. And I think as you break down and get into that sort of more relaxed relationship, I suppose, with lecturers where you do know them and you can just have a chat if you pass them um, at university or in the street, then, you know, I think that that really does help that sort of side of things. And it's a real strength, actually, of university. And it does allow you to ask, so I wouldn't say stupid, I wouldn't say there are any stupid questions, but, uh, you know, I think at the same time, it's it does, like you say, you can say, but I, I really don't understand this. Or, I think it gives you that confidence because you know the person, you know that, they're try- again, they're trying to facilitate that learning. So if you don't understand it, they'll just look at it a different way with you. And, you know, I think that's the, definitely one of the benefits of university, or at least at Derby. And they, they aren't judging you either. If you ask them a question that it may seem obvious, they aren't judging you. They're just going to say, think about how they could help. And um, if they do judge you, then probably talk to someone else about that and see if anyone else can help. I don't think I've ever had a lecturer judge me for asking a stupid question. Um, another thing that you mentioned that you did was uh, business. you managed the business society while doing a business management degree. You're managing a society that must give you such experience and skills that will help you in your future, for example. Um, I don't know if, how you felt that managing that society helped you, but I feel like on paper, it just stands out as this is amazing. I, I think there is that clear link between it, definitely. Um, it's kind of one of the advantages of a business man- business degree that you can, um, a lot of what you can do extracurricularly does link always to the degree in terms of the skills that you need to build but i think it did for some of the, what we were talking about at least in like first and second year it kind of made it more sort of relatable is that even if it was after the assignments what we were talking about is like oh yeah like okay i'm now you know leading a committee i am um, we're trying to effectively is a society effectively as a service and you're trying to provide that service you're trying to attract the members to join you've got to keep them happy who you, your customers you've got to manage the money side of things and I think it has massively, but I think actually they've worked sort of more intertwined that sort of the skills that I've learned on the degree have actually helped that, but also the society work has helped the degree. So um, it's worked really well for me, actually. Yeah, I was actually really surprised when I was in, when I started getting my results back in my second year, because you, you got first in your first year, but I didn't. I actually got two ones in my first year, which is what I aimed for. But I expected my results to go down, so my target was how much can I get them to go down without them going into below 60 was my goal because then there's extra quick opportunity to help me out. They actually went up and I think that was directly linked to the skills I was developing alongside through those extra quick opportunities. I don't know if you found something similar happen to you. Um, I think it has. I mean, I was fairly consistent actually in terms of the grades I got in first and second year, but it is that step up. So, you know, I stepped up, but just got it to the same mark. But actually coming back off of placement this year, and particularly with this second semester, I've seen that big jump up. Um, and obviously, our placements massively help that. Um, and I, it's like you say, for all the skills that you do, I can't put it just down to placement for sort of everything else that I do. But ultimately, that jump is partly confidence because like, I've seen, hang on, I've done it every other semester, I can get a first again. But also using that experience from the extracurricular activities, the placement, get to where I need to be and sort of look at it in a way that I've got first on in my other semesters. I can do that again, but then work with the lecturers and say, look, I don't just want to first, I want to sort of knock it out of the park this time and do <laughs> really well. And I, I've been lucky that I've, I've done that um, in this second semester and, you know, getting grades in sort of the 80s and 90s, which I, I, I didn't think <laughs> would have been possible at the start of university sort of like when i started the university i was aiming for a first but i was thinking oh let's just just get above 70 we're okay <laughs> yeah I, I always felt that i always want to motivate myself to do it as high as possible um regardless but yeah i do think taking opportunities does align with doing well i think it aligns with you developing skills which then can help the one thing i'd recommend is to manage those around your course to make sure that you actually do have enough time to still do your course as well so how did you manage 
doing your degree, still completing your assignments, and being the program rep, the part time officer, um, founding a society, being a union trustee, and everything else that you're probably doing alongside that as well. I think, you know, looking back on my time at uni, I think it's probably, I haven't sort of, I've kind of neglected the social side more than some students would have done, but that's because I've been busy. But then I'm the kind of person that does work hard and, you know, I don't mind spending those extra hours, you know, doing things. And uh, there were a few late nights near assignment deadlines trying to get stuff done. And, um, but I think it's that, that, you know, if I put, can put my mind to something that I enjoy and that I'm sort of invested in, I'll get it done. I think there's a few times where, at least with the society, that, you know, we made sure that we did a lot of the work over the summer so that actually it was re- it was a lot easier for us around sort of assignment deadline stuff. And, you know, we'd already planned the sessions and they were sort of like more social sort of things um, to require less input from us. Um, I think as well, like, some of the other meetings that I would have been involved in as part of some office or with the union sort of fell quite nicely for me. Um, but it's always, you know, some of the parts of some ones, if you, you know, it's a natural thing with these sort of voluntary roles is that you give up the time that you have. So, I mean, if you are some of those students that's taking that on and you are struggling, just say, I need to sit this meeting out and get some uni work done. Um, I think, you know, I sort of, thrive off of the pressure almost when when that pressure is really there with assignments and to get things done i look towards a, a really busy week um I, I get through it and sometimes that's the best work that comes out really hmm. i feel like I, i'm very similar with that as well um something interesting that you said though that you did which i think is really really important is that you did a lot of the hard work in the summer when you weren't busy and I think that's really good advice. So if you are struggling to manage your degree and other things, if you've got that time in the summer or another point in time as, instead, do the hard work then. So I learned that in my second year. I, I interviewed a student earlier on in the series called Anita Jo Howe. And when I went to her student live talk, I realized that's what one of her things that she did is she did a lot of things in the summer. So I tried to do the same. In my sec- the summer between my second year and my third year, I did as much hard work as I could to get the things up and running that I was doing. I run weekly skill sessions. I know that you run weekly um, business uh, events. Um, and so you have to be ahead with those things if you want to do them. But equally so, in the break between Christmas, for example, you can get stuff done then as well. So I know that I did a driving course in a week in that time to because that, that was the time when I was free to get it done, whereas I couldn't have got it done otherwise. So use the time when you're free uh, in like the summers and the Christmas times to, to, to really do the hard work that will help you to do the things uh, th- and get the experience elsewhere. I think that's it. And I think as well, you know, if you're a student who doesn't do as well under that pressure and like panics or gets really stressed around deadline times, almost like use that time over summer or Christmas to do your volunteering or your internships there. Uh, and keep that the rest of the year free if that's something that works. But yeah, I think utilising that time that you have when you have it, I think is really important for it. The second important thing that you said before was that you said no to things, which is really important, is learning to say no when you have other priorities and are too busy. I need to get better at that. I don't know if you need to get better at that or not, but I know I definitely need to get better at saying no to things. But... If you can prioritize things in the moment, say no or negotiate them, as we've discussed earlier on. If, if you have to say no or you want to do it, it's still a good opportunity, you can negotiate it, then do that. Don't just go to something when it's going to cause you not to be able to do your core functions, which are your degree, uh, and get your things in on time. It, it's definitely something I need to get better at. You know, unfortunately, I didn't say no many times and probably needed to a bit more. Um, but as I say, you know, get through it. I suppose that's my sort of mentality that, you know, I can sort of get through that bit. I, th- I think that's really important that, you know, a lot of this extracurricular stuff that you do at university is voluntary and you know, do just say no or say, well, actually, instead of that day, can we do it on this day or, you know, things like that. It, it's really important that time management that, whatever you do extra to take advantage of these opportunities and try and, you know, help support your, get, you getting into that future career that you want, you know, 
your degree comes first. And I think that's always a really important thing that I remembered is that, okay, I'm here for a degree. This is all extra stuff. Um, the degree comes first and that's what I've got to prioritize. So um, around assignment deadlines, if I am going to be really busy, yeah, I look at the calendar and I think, okay, you know, I've got enough in there now. I don't really want to have to take anything else on unless I have to. And I think that's a really important point to be is that you learn that as you go along at uni of how much time you're going to have to attribute to an assignment, how much time you're going to have free, you know, do you, do you need time to sort of rest in between doing things during the day? Um, if you're staring at a computer screen all day, um, and you sort of learn where your capability is. And I think that's something that you develop throughout university, but yeah, like learning to say no, I think is something that I definitely need to work on more, but um, it came in useful when I did so. So yeah, I totally agree with that. It's definitely learning how much time things take and how much time you need to dedicate to your studies is something you do learn throughout. Both of us seem to have the same attitude of our degree will take up all of our time in our first year. I do think it takes up more time in your first year when you're getting used to things, when you're trying to work out how to even do the research, how to write academically and things like that. That takes up a lot of time. And then in the second year, it takes up slightly less time. In the third year, it slightly takes up slightly less time. But you'll start to learn what your limitations are throughout. And something that I've constantly said is that the university is built to help you with that and manage that. So like I've always said throughout the series, the first year doesn't count at all towards your degree. You just need to pass it. Make sure you pass it, but try to get your bearings. Your second year only counts for 20% currently. So it's still important. 20% is still a lot. But actually you can still make mistakes whilst getting your bearings and trying to work out how to balance your time and how to do take opportunities whilst also doing your degree. And your third year counts 80%, and at that point, hopefully, you will have learned how you do, how you work best and how you can manage your time. You will have made mistakes that can motivate you, and you will have had failures that can help to motivate you as well. Uh, and so, I mean, yeah. not hopefully that you'll have failures, by the way, but you may have had failures that will have motivated you, and you will have made mistakes that will have helped you to do better and refine your process for your third year. If you've not made mistakes, either A, you're doing amazingly, or B, you're not pushing yourself enough. It's one of those two things. Yeah, we all do make mistakes whilst we're at university still. Um, but I think it is that, like you say, it, it, university builds you up to the final year um, so that by that point, like you say, you should know how to write academically, you know how to reference, you know where to look for your research things so it's yes you still need to step it up from second year but you, the foundations are there and i think that's a lot better than you know how you work you know how long it's going to take you to do something um you know where to go to get the support if you need it and um it does build you up that way and i think yeah the fact that the first year doesn't count like you say it's definitely a good year to try and get your bearings and try and try out a few different things to try and see whether it works for you and to shoot for the stars like you did and go for uh, first and try to get those cri criteria for your first, even though historically in the past not done as well at A-levels as you believed you could do. So I think that's all the questions I have for this podcast in terms of the main part of the podcast, from A-level failure to university success. But as a university successful student who's led a society and won awards and is a student just here at the Union of Students, I've got one last question to ask you, and that is a question that I ask everyone on the podcast, which is, what advice do you have for a student who's looking to find their own version of success? I think it's, you know, work out what motivates you. I think for me, that was, I'm very like goal motivated. So I sort of sat at the end of A-levels once I got into university and I was like, well, what do I want to achieve next? And it was a first class degree, a placement and a grad job. And I'm kind of in that phase now, having got just about to graduate. I've got a graduate job. But I'm now sitting, I'm like, well, what next? Because I'm kind of in that sort of stage where there isn't anything to sort of aim for because it's, it's achieved. Um, but I think when you work out what motivates you for your degree and what else you want to achieve at, at the end of the university, then you can sort of work out what you want need to do to get yourself there. And for me, you know, my lack of confidence, I thought I need to push myself out of that comfort zone, so I need to step up, which is where, you know, getting involved is like the program rep and different things at the Union of Students has actually allowed me to do that and step out of that comfort zone and be sort of that figure that 
people sort of know is that person who gets involved and has the confidence to speak up, um, which is a big difference from me at levels, but it all stems really from me knowing what motivates me. Um, and I think that's probably something that I didn't pull out as much when I was doing A levels. I didn't sort of look at it and think, okay, if I did this, I really want to get these grades or something else. It was more just getting it done. Whereas that, yeah, I think that motivation point is so important for anyone. And that's different. So for me, it's goals. For someone else, it might be something completely different. Um, depending on the circumstances, how you uh, motivate yourself or anything like that, you know, so but I think for me, it was that and then using the opportunities from extracurricular activities to get involved and um, achieve that. Definitely. I think motivation and understanding your goals are such an important part of finding your version of success. And we actually dedicate an entire podcast towards how you can motivate yourself and how you can persevere because it's such an important aspect of it. And in that podcast, we discussed how to find success. We believe you should motivate yourself, persevere, put the effort in and have a growth mindset to believe that you can do the things that you want to do and also to aim high. So yeah, if you want are interested in checking out that podcast, it'll be in the description of the podcast, which you can either find on the podcast sites or on the YouTube description of the podcast as well. So all that I have left to say is thank you so much, Joel, for all your advice today. I think it's been excellent, and I feel like we align massively uh, in terms of our university journeys. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for all your time. And thank you for having me on. Thanks again to Joel for sharing his story and advice. I really hope that it has inspired you to go out there and find success at university despite however you performed before you started. Here are my key takeaways from the episode. First, A-level results do not determine your future success at university. Whether you were extremely successful before university or did worse than you planned like Joel and I did, you can still find success by putting in the effort and having the right mindset right from the start of university. Second, university is a different environment than your previous study either at college or A-levels or wherever you did for your pre-university studies. You'll have a different relationship with your teachers and lecturers You'll have different assessment types with clear instructions and the ability to ask questions directly to the person who's marking your assessments. You'll be studying independently and you'll have the opportunity to take a lead in your own learning and to get involved in extracurricular activities to further your development. As university is different, you may find that you have different outcomes to your pre-university studies and that's okay but be willing to adapt and change how you study to maximise your outcomes. Finally, Joel discussed that he motivates himself through goal setting. He works out what he wanted to achieve before then working towards those goals. So when Joel started university, he aimed high and he aimed for a first class degree. And from day one, he was positive about getting this and he pushed himself towards this goal. If you too have a positive goal oriented mindset, you may find the success that you want. If you find that you are struggling after your first semester, then you can reflect on your approach to change it and adapt it to hopefully find more success later on. We have podcasts for growth mindset, reflection and motivation that you may find useful in helping yourself turn around uh, your A-level or pre-university grades into future success. And that is it. The final podcast of the Success as a Student podcast series, which has been 23 episodes filmed since January 2021, all the way up until August 2021. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of all these episodes and thank you to anyone who's listened to these. If you have any feedback about any of the podcasts, please send it to library at derby.ac.uk by email or feel free to comment on the YouTube version of these podcasts. We now have a guide for all the different podcasts in this series as well as also having a playlist and that will be linked in the description of this podcast. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to these episodes and I really hope that these have inspired you to develop yourself further and to maximise your experience at university. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio and to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.